Welcome to the Love Lab podcast, a safe place to get real about sex. Whether you're man, woman, single or couple, this is the show for you because well, sex matters. We are your hosts, Kevin Anthony and Celine Remy. All right, welcome back to the Love Lab podcast. This is episode 39. It's almost turning 40. It's almost over the hill. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and today's episode is questions you should ask on a first date and beyond. I'm super excited about this particular show. Um, we talked about doing this for a little while, and we've been coming up with really cool questions. And one of the reasons we wanted to do this show is because we know that dating can be pretty daunting for a lot of people. And one thing that I have noticed is, yes, we are more connected now than ever with electronics and technology and at the same time people are having the hardest time in being real humans and when it comes to dating and creating quality relationship and intimacy and connection it seems to me from an outsider perspective that people went back to Cromanian like they like I don't know. I don't know what's happening to their brains and their skills and their abilities, but somehow it's just not serving them very well. So we're hoping that this episode is going to give you some good ideas and give you permission to to act with kindness and confidence in asking questions because sometimes we've been told, oh, we can't ask you this, we can't do this. And I'm the first person to say, if I want to know something, I ask about it. And people know oh, that about me. Oh, oh, that is very true. <laughs> I'm known among most of my friends as the one who's going to ask the questions that everybody wants to know, but is too afraid to ask. Mm -hmm. That is very true. <laughs> Sometimes, actually, before we go out, Kevin tells me, I would want to know this. Can you like make sure I get to know the answer? I'm like, no problem. I've got you. <laughs> yeah. Well, the other reason we wanted to do this episode is because we have multiple friends who are on the dating scene And we kind of watch what they go through and we watch where they pick partners who are compatible and where they pick partners who aren't compatible. And so we thought it would be really uh, helpful if we gave a list of things that you would want to know before you get too far down the road. Absolutely. Right? And this episode is... Uh, you know, questions for a first date and beyond. So some of these will be very appropriate for a first date. And some of them, you may want to wait a few dates, you know, because <laughs> you don't want to freak the person out on the first date. But, but they're all really great questions. And what we've done too is we've kind of split the questions up into some general categories. Mm -hmm. And they're categories that, you know, somewhat roughly correlate to the wheel of life if you've ever done that, but uh, not necessarily exactly. Mm -hmm. And I want to say, if you are dating right now, kudos to you. I think it's the hardest time to date. So I want to say I have compassion. I hear you. It is difficult at times and challenging and you... Yeah, you're out there and doing it, so congratulations. Yeah, and you know, there's never been more tools available to help people date, and yet I just repeatedly see over and over again people struggling more with dating than they ever have. Mm -hmm. so, so one of the first thing before we dive into our questions is, you know, a lot of people think that, okay, maybe I should learn those tactics or this strategy that I've heard or like, oh, do not call him back too soon or do not tell her I love her too soon. Like there's so many things. I'm sure you've heard some of those things. Oh, tactics and strategies. You know how we feel about those. <laughs> and so it kind of goes on like people think maybe I shouldn't reveal too soon my true colors or, or who I am or what I want. And we want to say this, we want to call bullshit basically. Bullshit. Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> and I think the sooner you can be yourself, the better it is because I've witnessed too many people be like, this is who I should be. They have an idea in their mind of who the person they should be, should be. <laughs> and that's how they show up. And then fast forward three or five months into the relationship. And then they totally change because you can't keep up with that charade for very long. You can't continue to pretend to be somebody that you're not. But, Absolutely. But even more than that, for me, it's just like, you know, 
when you're out there looking for a partner, you're, you, you're looking to, for lack of a better uh, term, get something, right? In other words, like if I use a, a simple analogy, which is you go to a restaurant and you're going to order some food because you want a certain kind of food. But if you don't actually ask the waiter questions about, you know, well, what is this thing on the menu that I've never heard of? Or how will this actually come? What is the likelihood that you're going to get what you want and you're going to be happy with it? It's kind of the same thing with dating. Like we're giving you all these questions so that you can figure out whether or not this person is a good match. If you don't ask these questions, if you don't have any idea, how, what's the likelihood that, that this is actually going to go somewhere and this person's actually going to be compatible with you? Absolutely. So let's make a good distinction. Uh, if you're just out there to get laid, which is awesome too, you're experiencing your sexual freedom and having fun and you have no intentions of creating creating a deep intimacy connection and long-lasting relationship. You don't need those questions. Well, you'll need the sexuality category, That's but you true. can you can just skip straight <laughs> to that one and you can forget the rest. But if you're looking for more than just that, then you're going to want to know the rest of these. So let's dive into them. Okay. So our first category, we called it lifestyle question. And so Basically, what is your lifestyle question? It's about how do you live your life? Uh, what kind of lifestyle you have? And so we're going to break it down into all these different questions to help you get it. Like, are you aligned with that person? Because ultimately, if you're going to live with that person, you better have some similar ways of behaving and living. Otherwise, it's going to be hell. Even if you're just going to date the person, you want to make sure that you want to do the same types of things on dates, right? Uh So, you know, in our lifestyle category, uh, we have all kinds of different things. And I'm just going to randomly pick one here from the list. But it's like, what kinds of activities do you like to do? Do you like to go hiking or would you rather be sitting inside, you know, watching movies? And I'm going to tell a story here about Celine and I, because I think it's totally appropriate, which is that when I met Celine, you know, Celine's a very beautiful woman and she would have her hair done and she'd dress really nice and, you know, never a lot of makeup, but maybe just a little bit of makeup. And she just looked like a very feminine woman who you know, you might have assumed that for her, an ideal weekend would be at the mall buying clothes or or something like that. Are you saying high maintenance? (laughs) I did not say that, but yes. (laughs) You may have assumed that she was high maintenance, right? And so, you know, when when, when I was first getting to know her, I was thinking things like, you know, I, I spent pretty much all of my 30s out camping every single weekend, you know, rock climbing around the world, mountain biking all over the country. And I'm thinking, oh, here's this, you know, pretty high maintenance woman who's not going to like to do any of that stuff. And you know what? The more I got to know her, the more I realized I was completely wrong. She loves to camp. She goes climbing with me. We hike all over the place. We travel, like all of these things that I had no idea when I first met her. I just made assumptions based on what I was seeing outwardly in the appearance. And so had I, had I asked those questions on day one, I would have known the answers a little sooner. <laughs> so here's another question that's really good. What's your ideal Saturday Or what's your ideal Sunday? What does it look like? And I really like this question because, you know, as you are on the first date, you don't want it to sound too much like a job interview, right? Uh, But at the same time, you really want to start to see like how compatible, like where do you guys meet? And what I love about that question about what does it like a great weekend look like for you? What does your Saturday look like or your Sunday? You kind of like, you're getting a glimpse into that person of like, Oh, I don't take weekends off because I'm a workaholic. Right, right. They, they, might, they might say, well, I generally work on Saturdays. And you're like, uh, that's not cool, you know? Or, or they might say, you know, my idea of a great Saturday is to be on the couch wrapped up in a blanket reading a book all day. Exactly. And then your idea might be, well, I'd rather actually be out hiking in the backcountry all mm-hmm. weekend. 
right? Those aren't necessarily compatible Saturdays, are they? And, you know, at the same time, I want to make put a word of caution out there. Like, sometimes people are willing to try new things. Just because the person is not into a certain activity doesn't mean they might not like it later. No, of course. So of course. always keep, like, I want to say like this with a grain of salt. Like, okay, like, don't be so... There is something that we do see sometimes in some of our friends where they have a really strong definition and there's a cage, basically, they've created around themselves of, like, this, 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 and not that, and not this and not that. And in putting yourself in that particular scenario, it makes it much harder to open up and to be open to possibilities because you're like oh if it doesn't look exactly the way I pictured it then it's I'm not even going to give it a try yeah that's a good point to make so and obviously before you go on dates know what your deal breakers are right so there's certain (laughs) things some of these questions will be your deal breakers and those are things that you absolutely cannot compromise on that are just so important to you that you're not going to make a change. And then there are other things where you can just totally be open. But let's go into a few more of these lifestyle questions, right? So I love the, what is your ideal Saturday? That was a great one. Um, I think we all already mentioned what kind of activities do you like to do? Mm -hmm. You know, like for instance, for me, I'm considered a, um, a super active person in, uh, uh, the match matrix system, which if you haven't seen that, you can see that at match matrix, but basically it just means that I I need to be moving all the time. Right. So for me, uh, being with somebody that doesn't want to do that much physical activity is, is not a good match. So that's a good question. So I have a good question when we're putting it together, which was like, how do you relax? And you know what I love about this question is, well, first of all, it's talking about positive things because who doesn't like relaxation and, and doing good things like that. But somebody's definition of relaxation might be, I go home, I pour a glass of whiskey and turn on the TV. And to me, that's like the worst thing. Or actually the worst would be, I watch a soccer game while drinking my whiskey. (laughs) For me, that would be my worst thing. I'm sure for a soccer fan, I might be like, oh yeah, I can't wait to do that. (laughs) But like you would get to me much more if you're like, I relax by reading a book or I relax by, I don't know, playing music or going, watching the sunset or things like this. So that way it gives you a good idea of what people do to get rid of the stress. For sure. Well, you know, uh, if they don't even have an answer to that question, then you know, they're probably way too stressed because, <laughs> because <laughs> they don't even know what they do to relax. Yeah. But, but then of course, what they do to relax tells you a lot about their lifestyle traits. And so you know, if you're the type of person that, that doesn't like to drink or smoke or watch TV, then obviously that wouldn't be compatible. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you are the type of person that likes to do those things, you're like, oh, hell yeah, that's what I want to do. Mm-hmm. You know, and there's no right or wrong. It's just the, just trying to match up with somebody that likes to do the same things you like to do. So I'm a foodie. And so we had to come up with a food question because to me, it's definitely part of my deal breakers and so i thought that the question if you could eat anything for breakfast lunch and dinner what would it be would give me a good idea of the person and um i could sense like okay what do they eat what are their beliefs around their food and so anything around those lines you can word it whatever way you want but kind of getting to see if somebody gets animated when they talk about food the kind of food they pick and whether or not it fits your own particular choices yeah and this is so big today because everybody's like <laughs> everyone's i'm gluten-free i'm vegan i'm pescatarian i'm this i'm that I'm, you know there's like 40,000 different, you know, I'm on keto and I'm on the, you know, oh, I'm paleo over here, you know. So, so since there's so many different styles uh, that are very important to people, it would be nice to know whether or not you, you lined up. And f- for instance, somebody says, well, I'm gluten free and I can't go near anything that's a grain. And somebody's like, yeah, but my favorite food on this planet is pasta. I could eat it every single day. There, there might be a little incompatibility there. <laughs> now, having said that, I do know that in this category, like I've had these long-term friends that I've known for years and years and years and years and years, and he is a big meat eater, and she was a hardcore vegan activist. <laughs> <laughs> and it did work. They're no, still together. They're still together. They've been together for a very long time. They've got kids, the whole deal. 
but they had to find ways to make that work. Like she had her own separate cookware that he was not allowed to cook any meat in. And, you know, they found ways to make it work. But these are things that uh, you want to know ahead of time, right? Because Mm -hmm. for a lot of hardcore vegan activists, and I've known quite a few, (laughs) um, that just even even trying to make those arrangements would be unacceptable for a lot of them. Mm -hmm. So... So let's move on to that question. Kevin, you came up with this one. I thought it was really cool. And you were talking about like, if your date is happening outside, like, you know, wherever, at a public place or cafe or whatever, to ask the person, describe to me what your home looks like. Yeah. So I was thinking about this one because, you know, the space that somebody lives in tells you a lot about their personality. (laughs) Right. And yeah. and what a lot of people and I've had this happen to myself too, where like I'm totally I'm you know, I'm dating and I'm sort of into somebody and I'm thinking that there's a lot of compatibility. And then at some point after the first date or a couple of dates or however long it is, you end up at their place and you walk in, and you're like, Oh fuck, what's going on in here? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I have and I've had friends, not necessarily people I've dated, but I've had friends that I you know, I loved and they were great people. And then they like, after five years, they finally invite me over to their house. I walk in, it turns out they're a hoarder. Mm, right. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, whoa, like what is going on in this uh-huh. place? Right. So describing what your home looks like can really tell somebody, you know, what you're like. Yeah. Absolutely. And then also if you're a homebody, you can see, do they put energy into their home or is it just a place to sleep? You know, like, Mm -hmm. like all of these things. I used to say that I could basically know anything about somebody by their fridge. And that's usually one of the first thing I do. (laughs) You did. You totally looked at my fridge when we first started dating. (laughs) (laughs) I've always done that, you know. I would just go and open the fridge and see. And it would tell me everything about who they are because then I can see the kind of choices they do. Is the fridge organized? Is there more growing through the fridge? Is it clean? Like so many things. Is the food organic? Exactly. All Mm. the things that are important to me. Do they eat junk food or good food? So if you're Do they cook? (laughs) Is it all prepared stuff or is it just raw ingredients? (laughs) So hey, if the first date is at their place, go open that fridge. (laughs) Don't even ask, just do it. (laughs) Well, you know, one of the things that was interesting because when when Celine, when you and I moved in together, Uh um, and uh, we had a housewarming party, a lot of people came over and they're like wow, your house is amazing. Like you did such an amazing job decorating. Like how did you get all this stuff together? And we both looked at each other and we said, we owned all of this before we moved in. Like this is a mix of our stuff and it looks like it was put together by an interior designer, even though it really wasn't. That's true. But it's just because our styles and our tastes and the things that we like were so similar Mm -hmm. that when we combined them, it looked like it was meant to go together. Mm Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So these are things that you can tell when you see somebody's house. <laughs> <laughs> so there's one more trick question here uh, before we move on to our intimacy slash sexuality section. Ooh, I know it's hot. So, mm-hmm. uh, but the last question is something around money because money is such a big trigger, and it's um, uh, how do you like to spend your money? Because you know you don't want to ask plain blank like how much do you make, and especially if like you're a woman asking a guy, because then the guy is like all I all I am for her is an ATM. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like oh she's interested in is my money and my status, but like actually how like how do you like to spend your money? <laughs> yeah, I I thought this was a cool question because it can really tell you a lot of things. Like if somebody says. Well, you know, what I really like to do is go to the bar on Friday night and, you know, just drink till I get my fill. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that that's interesting. Okay, that's one choice of way to spend your money. But also somebody might say, well, you know, I really don't, I prefer to save my money mm-hmm. and not spend it. Mm-hmm. Or somebody might say, you know, I, I like to save it to go travel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's, you, there's a min, million different ways, but but every one of those answers tells you something about their personality. Yeah. And then you can decide whether or not it's compatible with yours. And oftentimes we do have different styles when it comes to money, whether you're a spender or a saver or things like that or anything in between. And uh, if you know you have issues around money uh, that 
you need to be with somebody who can be as close as possible to your own ways of dealing with money because it is the I think it is the biggest statistically speaking contingencies when with people like issues in couples. Totally. It's a big one for sure. All right. Let's get into some juicy yes. stuff, which is the intimacy slash sexuality questions. Now, if it's your first date, you know, some of these may or may not apply. But then again, if sex is a high priority for you, you may want to ask these right up front. For instance, we have a close friend um, who was recently just going through this. She met somebody new and she was curious and they just dove straight into the questions about sex. And mm -hmm. they were like, okay, I like this. I want this. Like boom, 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 boom. And they found through that exchange that they actually had a real compatibility in that area. Mm -hmm. Well, there's one question you want to ask. And I really think first it really matters is... <laughs> When was the last time you got tested? That's a great first date question. Absolutely. Yeah. And by tested, we mean tested for STDs, <laughs> right? So, <laughs> so when was the last time that you actually got tested for STDs? And what were the results? And what were the results? And we do have an entire episode on... Um, yeah, safe sex safe talk sex and practices, practices and, and all of that. So yeah, yeah. listen to that one if you haven't yet, because it's going to give you all the details. Absolutely. But that's the very first question. Especially, you know, they, they say that uh, a woman knows pretty much instantly whether or not she's going to have sex with you. Uh -huh. So this is an important point for guys. When you go out on a first date, the moment she sees you, she decides whether or not she's going to have sex with you. And if she decides it's a yes... Everything that happens after that point is you trying not to fuck that up. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Right? Because she looks at you, she instantly sizes you up and feels something that's energetic mm -hmm. or that's sort of uh, not said. Mm -hmm. And she decides right then and there, yes, this is a possibility. Yeah, it doesn't mean that night, but... Right, <laughs> right. But, but every interaction you have, everything you say, everything you yes. do is either going to make or break that. So if you feel really brave... And I would encourage you to ask us really quickly on the dates. What kind of sex do you like? Yeah, this is important. So ba back to our friend's story, you know, she loves BDSM. Like, and she, she likes hard sex, like kind of rough sex. Uh, and so that's a real requirement for her. Like if a guy can't take her and like really give that to her, she's not into it. Mm -hmm. And she knows that about herself, which is great because... She knows that. She knows what to ask for. And she knows when she's interviewing potential partners that, hey, if, if you can't manhandle me like this, right, then let's not even bother. That's, and that's important for her. Mm -hmm. So I like the next question, and we'll tell you why with a little story, but what kind of experiences have you had? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I like this one a lot uh, because, again, you can learn a lot about somebody and, and maybe how open they are or not. But here's the real reason why I like this question. We have uh, some other friends. They're a couple, and they're going to be getting married. And... Um, he has had a lot of uh, sort of fantasies about things like threesomes and stuff like that, but he's never experienced any of it. So, uh, and then of course, on the other hand with her, she's like not really into any of that stuff. And so what is very interesting about that situation is that let's say um, you as a woman know that what you want is 100% monogamy, and that's the path you want to go down. And you meet a guy who uh, has never had a threesome or never had any crazy experiences. That might be a sign. Because here's the thing. As guys, we all fantasize about this. I don't know a single guy that hasn't fantasized about being with more than one partner at the same time. Or about... Uh, having sex with different types of women or, you know, like there's a million fantasies that go through our heads. Mm -hmm. And if we've never had a chance to experience any of those, that could kind of come back to bite the relationship in the ass later on down the road when he's starting to feel in his midlife crisis that he hasn't lived yet because he's never had a threesome. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, it's really important. The difference between in the head, the fantasy and the reality and whether or not it matches and how to bridge that gap. Mm -hmm. So let's dive into the category now that we call spirituality. And spirituality, we are not referring to any religious beliefs and paths. But if that is something that is important to you, this should be really asked pretty soon. Like, hey, what kind of religion are you, if any at all? And would you be okay dating somebody with different spiritual views than yours? Especially if you, let's say you're like an atheist or you just, just consider yourself spiritual but not religious. Like, it's yeah. very important. Well, you know, apparently I'm realizing from this episode we have a lot of friends, right? Because we have, <laughs> we have friends, right, where they were, they were dating and we knew, we knew both of them, not just mm -hmm. one of them, and they were considering getting together. And... Uh, You know, he was an atheist and she was deeply spiritual. And mm -hmm. that was a real issue. It was like, wow. In, in her mind, she's like, I, I, I don't understand how this can be, you know. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure he's probably thinking the same thing. And so these are important things to know. Yeah. So, you know, what are your religious views? Uh, are they the same? And if they're not, are, is there a possibility that you could be okay having those different views, mm -hmm. whatever they are? Yeah. And... <clears throat> You know, if you feel pretty bold in asking things, it's like, do you believe in and whatever insert in there, your own deal breaker. So if you like, um, do you believe in religion? If that's a deal breaker for you, you know, as, mm -hmm. as that, do you believe in whatever you don't particularly like? Do Give you believe you're going to heaven or hell? <laughs> <laughs> And uh, these are good. These are good, you know, because also I think they're genuine and, and they usually will give you the unfiltered answer. Well, and, you know, spirituality, uh, whether you are or aren't spiritual, is usually such a deep part of most people's lives mm -hmm. that it's really important to make sure that you're compatible in that area. If you have vastly different belief systems, mm -hmm. it's going to be really hard for you to maintain a long and strong and healthy relationship. Yeah. And it might be good to know when things get tough, you know, who do you turn to? What do you do? You know, like, because, you know, some people will say, oh, I pray, I go to church or I turn around to my community or my friends, you know, like how supportive are your friends, but things like that, like or I have my family or I, I, I only trust in myself. Like you can really get like, because life will have ups and downs. And you need to know a little bit in advance also, like, hey, what, like, really, how do you behave in those situations? Totally. If you're, if you're having, you know, maritable, marital difficulties, then, yeah, is it, well, I want to go talk to a priest about it? Is yeah. it I want to go talk to a marriage counselor? Is it I want to go, you know, work with uh, Celine? You know, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. A, they're all very different options. So we have a last category here, which we call the path forward. And these may not be the very, very first date questions, but they should be really soon. Depends. If you're Celine, these would probably be first date questions. <laughs> Pre-dates. Pre-dates. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, one is like, just, hey, what are you looking for right now? I mean, honestly, this should be a first date or pre-date, honestly. Yeah, this is a first date question. What are you looking for right now? Mm -hmm. For sure. Is it, are you looking for just, you know, a fling? Are you looking for long-term partner? Mm -hmm. Are you looking for baby daddy? You know, like whatever it is. Yeah. What are you looking for right now? Mm -hmm. what, what, why are we here? Mm -hmm. right. I like that. Mm -hmm. And then the very important one. Do you want to have kids? Oh my God. This one is huge, 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 huge. Because I've seen so many couples go through almost all of the questions and somehow fucking forget this one. Yeah. How do you forget this one? Having kids is probably the biggest thing you'll ever do in your life. How do you not ask that question right from the beginning? Mm -hmm. And then here's the thing, ladies that are listening. Don't think that he's going to change his mind later. I've worked with several clients of mine and, you know, he always said he didn't want to have kids. She then was changed her mind, wanted to have kids. And finally he gave in his mistake, had a kid. And it did not help their relationship. Actually, it made him miserable. Their connection went really low. And it's not the type of thing that you want to just 
manipulate somebody with? Absolutely not. So ask the question and get an honest answer. And if you're the one who's asked the question, answer it honestly. Yeah. Yes. It's really important you do this one honestly. Well, it's important you do all of them honestly, but especially this one. And remember, having kids is hard. You don't want to do it alone. You want to do it with somebody who wants that as much as you do. Because totally. it is a team work and team effort. Yeah. So here's an interesting one that I kind of like too, which is where do you see yourself in X number of years, right? Mm -hmm. um, because it's really cool. If you're really thinking about sharing a life with this person, you want to know what do they think their life is going to be like, right? It could be, they might say, well, probably just the same as right now, right? Mm -hmm. Or they might say, well, I, you know, I'm here right now, but I, I'm hoping that by X amount of time, I'll be living in this different place, or I'll have this different job, or <laughs> I'll be retired, or I'll start this business, or I'll have kids, I won't have kids. Like, uh -huh. like where somebody, what, what the trajectory of their path going forward mm -hmm. is, is important if you're thinking about following them on that path. Absolutely. And then if they go like, you know, my dream is to live in Montana, and you know spend really rough winters and do this and you're like oh my god i really really don't like snow it may not be a good oh yeah this is the, the, i mean that's an example right out of my past history <laughs> where, where you know meeting somebody and living in southern california and i'm not born and raised in southern california i moved here because the weather's great <laughs> <laughs> so you're not going anywhere where it's yeah, not. <laughs> you know <laughs> and yeah and i had a relationship where the where the person said later on well, yeah, I've been born and raised here, but honestly, I'd, I'd rather be living like somewhere in Montana. And I was mm -hmm. like, oh, Montana is beautiful and it's really cold <laughs> and there's lots of snow. <laughs> no. <laughs> so as you can see, there's a lot of options and all these questions are designed to help you take away the anxiety of like, what are we going to say to each other on the first date? Because there's always a little part of like, are we going to be compatible? Is it going to work? And ultimately, that can even help you to just forge a friendship and create a bond. And then you can decide, do you want this to go deeper and have um, sex with that person? Or is it just a friendship? Or is it not even worth the investment? But those questions will help you to go deeper to the heart of the matter and create better choices, make better decisions in your choices yeah, and you know, if you're a younger person, you're probably thinking, I'm going to never ask that question. But trust us, ask the questions. It really makes a big difference. And Selena and I, we're both two people who like to just sort of get to the point. We don't like to beat around the bush, as they say, you know. So it's like, just ask the questions. Find the stuff out right away. That mm -hmm. way you can save yourself a lot of time, a lot of trouble, a lot of potential pain. Mm -hmm. Just like... Boom. Ask the questions, make good decisions from the beginning. And there is really a thinking about where, whatever way you start something is basically how this thing's going to go for the long term. So if you start something with a good foundation of honesty and communication, this is really the foundation and the base for the relationship from there on. If you start something from a place of fear, from a place of, of dishonesty or anything like that, that's what you're going to get down the road. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> that's all the time we have for this episode. We had way more questions we could have <laughs> thrown in there. This is not an exhaustive list. There's way more that you could potentially ask, but we just wanted to hit uh, at least a couple of the ones that we thought were most important. So hopefully this will help you and happy dating. We hope you liked this episode of the Love Lab podcast. If you enjoyed this show, leave a comment and share it with your friends. And if you want more, we have an entire digital library with the best sex tips and relationship advice at CelineRemy.com. That's C-E-L-I-N-E-R-E-M-Y.com. So join us in the sex vault to continue this adventure. Thanks for listening. And remember, you're amazing.